Welcome back to another Alliance War video. We have four Loki versus Paolo. We are rematched against them. This is the 11th war of the season. So we're almost done with the season. White Magneto, Ghost, and Warlock are banned along with Herc and Torch all season. So uh, interesting bands right there with uh, Warlock and White Magneto. But let's take a look at my team. It's Professor X, Valkyrie, and Omega Sentinel. And once again, I just pause right here. <laughs> Uh, just I'm super paranoid all the time. I do this every single war But let's take a look at the map and where my fights are at I'm just going to burn some energy initially. Uh, I didn't think that I was gonna have to clear um, quickly um, At first, but I have this white magneto on path 5 Evan flow knockdown do up me on knockdown I have Nick Fury on Evan flow knockdown heavy hitter so he's going to stop over his heavies I have this Wong with prowess buildup and debuff uh, immune on knockdown and then I have a Tuma on path 7 uh, with a protection 90% protection and I have a Korg boss an R2 Korg boss again and uh, yeah so looking at the map uh, you know uh, we're trying to figure out they left 49 open so no abs uh, man for this Korg like last war um, so I'll be taking it just needed to get some fights under Professor X's belt to, um, to uh, move up on that boss but first up, we're going to be taking Omega Sentinel, who is an attacker tactic, and uh, going up against White Magneto. And she is metal, however, her ability accuracy cannot be reduced by mutants. So that essentially doesn't do much uh, um, for White Magneto, and she has just, you know, crazy attack. I'm running a full recoil tree here. She, this is my only Omega Sentinel fight, so if I have to throw specials, uh, I will. I'm going to block that SB1, I just did it right there, just see what it would do to the block, and it didn't do anything, so I'm just, you know, I'm just, you know, cooking at this point. I knock him down because I want to throw, um, I want to throw an SB2 when I get it, and uh, I'm basically going to bait a heavy, and throw my SB2 just to get some damage here, and my Fury is about to fall off, which is fine, I don't get any incinerates off of the, with the node anyway, so he does a full 5 combo into my block, and then just retaliate and basic hits are just going to get him down at this point so that was a pretty standard omega sentinel fighter probably should have uh, thrown an sb1 at the end of that one combo to, to get the, the protection down but ultimately it was fine next up i have this nick fury um i did take uh the recall tree off i will be using i will be using professor x and through the synergy with omega sentinel after this fight i'm going to get two charges instead of just one for the win which is important um but i'm throwing an indestructible boost on i have max coagulate i have even uh, points in my in the mutant mastery that limits bleed um because you know i i miss parries the game sometimes has input issues um you know you panic whatever happens and and fury's bleeds can't hurt i'm not running a uh, class boost here i am running uh max points out of recoil but uh, th that the, the goal is basically to uh, parry heavy um, and use my combo uh, to push him to two bars to limit him from throwing his SB1. And the reason that's important is because that way I can use my falter to knock him down once I kill his first light if he doesn't have, um, you know, or as, as I'm going that way. Like right there, I, I ramped up, I was ramping up to 100 using my falter. And at this point, you know, I, wanna, I want him to... Uh, yeah, I want to parry and get a, a full combo in there, and boom, I let another parry push him to two bars, and this is exactly where I want to be at. Um, I, I get a knockdown to get the fury, and I miss a parry, so he throws a two-piece into me and I'm bleeding. You see that I'm healing there. So a willpower and a coagulate and the mastery draw helping here. And at this point, I only do a one hit, because I want to get a parry and knock him down. I want to kill his first life. Um, and then throw my SB3. That's ideally what I want to do. And if he doesn't have any tactical charges, he shouldn't, right? Yeah, he shreds them all. He'll be at two bars right here. The Fury goes away, but I'm going to use my Falter to knock him down and then heavy charge into my special three. I'm not going to have three bars. This is not the SB3 span because I'm not mutant boosted because I will be waiting after my next fight after this. I have a Wong. And then I'll be taking one fight and then the boss. But my SB2 
is going to have two prowess plus heavy charging through for a third, and it will kill him. And even if it didn't, I would eat the recoil damage, and the last two special ones would definitely kill him. So I would have no fear of, uh, of him basically doing anything crazy there. Now, the next up is this Wong on 19. And um, I dueled a little bit, and I, I wanted to basically speed up my ramp up with, uh, with Wong. Initially, I thought that a power start one would be best, and that's what I popped in here. And in, funny enough, as the fight was started and going on, I get hit, and I, I thought I had an indestructible, because I was like, well, if I push him red. And I did that because in my duels, I realized that I didn't need the uh, power start one, um, because I'm gonna be hitting him to gain power, and I won't be able to even ramp up damage to really maximize that special two uh, with the power start one. But when I went to apply my boost, uh, that slipped my mind. So you see here, I alternated my combo to, to go back under. I have one pierce in my uh, 14. I'm gonna throw my SP2 and invert my combo to basically go back and get two pierce and I have a bulwark, okay? The bulwark is important because, and that's <coughs> that's where I, I was like, oh, I don't have any structural boost. The bulwark is also important because his prowess is gonna build up and I have to block all of these. I can't dex this, I'm not dexing it in war though. Um, and I wanna mitigate as much block damage as possible. So, I'm using basic combos to keep the prowess down, but I also wanna make sure that um, that I don't feed him too much power. And here I throw this special two into his block with three pierce and two bulwark. He holds his block, so I go in for more. And uh, at this point, I'm like, okay. Uh, the fights, I'm in pretty good shape, but I see his, his uh, energy charging up, and I don't want to hit him too much. I want to bait this SB uh, two, and uh, I can hit his block where it mitigates his power. He throws a special two to dump his power. I'm like, perfect. And at this point, I don't want to get that damage reflex. I only hit him twice there, and I back off and see how he goes to 100. Now I throw a combo into his block with my SB2 ready, and I end the fight. It was the only fight I needed out for, and uh, and I'm, I'm pretty happy with the way it went. Probably would have been better off with an indestructible boost and really maximize that first special two, but it's okay. Now this fight, I, I always take Atuma with the wags, and uh, I can take him without a wags. But whenever I have, I have used a power start one. And I thought, well, you know what? I don't really need it for this fight. I'd rather get an indestructible boost because um, if I get hit or, you know, whatever happens, right? He has the prowess. And I have, I have all the points off of the, my position, position, precision masteries because I'm taking the boss after. And I uh, was afraid about an accidental parry before i've never actually done that with a tuba but you know what you fear basically becomes reality but you'll see here i use an instructional boost and i crit twice right away and then i parry by accident he throws a special one and he gets six hydration charges and this is essentially going to be a problem because i use my falter there to ramp up a little bit you see i'm at a bar if i had a power start one I would be at two bars of power at this point. And he throws another special one, and I'm like, okay, perfect. Nothing nothing too uh, too bad at this point. I'm hitting his block to uh, back him up. He throws another special one, but now he's he's unstoppable. And I'm just like, oh, man, okay. I need to really get out of this fight. So I use my falter to get another, uh, another uh, to knock him down and get the protection down. I would be at three bars, and I could spam my SP3 at this point. The fight would be over. But now... He's at 19 uh, hydration charges and he's unstoppable. And I'm like, okay, I'm not on my SP3. Uh, I, I'm gonna, I resist saving there. I use my falter to try to, you know, I'm trying to get him to a bar of power to remove the unstoppable. And it's not, I'm like, what do I do? Do I throw my SP3? I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna eat some heavies and see how that builds power. But it's giving him concussion. So I just throw my SP3 to get out of this corner. And I'm thinking like, I'll at least have two bars per Professor X's uh, signature ability and I'll get some power back from the uh, power back. But the protection will be down and I'll be able to kill him. I almost get three. I'm gonna heavy charge into my special two and he's at 1% and I throw my SP3. I mean, this is just, I had to take that last bit of recoil down. Now, I don't know if uh, if this was just because I, my first time not using the power start one uh, with him with uh, against the tuma or the buff did something to increase his hydration or how that happens i'm gonna have to go back and check all that 
but this definitely got way out of hand way too fast for a fight that's super super simple um, if I just use the right grade boost so that's that's something I will change in the future so here I have a horseman um, uh, applied shout out to Steve for that I have a tracking debuff uh, for my Mega Sentinel because you always need those to uh, to win boss fights uh, you know according to uh, Andrew and uh, I'm gonna use a combat power uh, regen because I'm not gonna I'm not gonna race to my uh, to get my charges up because I can't heavy counter him. I'm gonna use my falter to do so. So I'm gonna be taking a lot of block hits to start. And opportunist doesn't really ramp up at the beginning, but it at least will leave me topped off. And I put on my uh, the bleed points in the recoil tree, so horseman can basically heal me through that process as well. So at this point, the the goal is to get him to an SP2, um, and. Then after he dumps his power, I'm going to um, use my falter to get a, get a heavy charge. But he throws an SB1, same same difference. He's under a bar. I can use my falter, and my sig's gonna carry me up by the time my falter resets uh, again. So this is where I'm just taking block damage. None of my hits are gonna take thorn damage because they're all energy. And at this point, I'm like, okay, he just needs to throw this special too, and it's okay that he's you know being kind of passive. Just want to back him up a little bit. And I'm gonna use a heavy charge right here. A nice long one to uh, to ramp. He has one rock stack left, and I'm almost at uh, I'm almost red, so this is lining up perfectly. And now I get it down, and the fight's over. Back up, heavy charge. And what what I wanted to test in this fight, I wasn't worried about the beginning part of it. Um, I did review my old quirk fights this season, so I do like uploading because I can actually have them reference and save somewhere that's off my phone. And listen to myself but i heavy charge here so i burn a little bit of my mind control timer to heavy charge because that's going to give me another prowess um that's going to essentially make me do more damage and i was just just to do some you know some research after the, the war uh, if i can mitigate an extra sp3 right and right there i did not heavy charge i was going to see if it was going to kill and i'm doing the math and i'm like it doesn't look like um i think it was 23 percent per sp3 and it doesn't look like it will end up uh, killing, uh, but I didn't want to run out of mind control. So right there, I should have heavy charge for my last SP3. I'm at 25%, and I'm doing the math thinking that it'll leave me short by two. If I would have heavy charged, I would have killed him, and I'm just seeing if this if my math is correct, and it is. He is at 2%, and I, I uh, throw the last SP3, and he's dead. So overall, you know, smooth war. The Tuma looked a little crazy, um, but I did understand what was going on. Um, I just don't know if the buff or not had um, had anything to do with him shooting up so quickly in hydration. I know he threw a lot of specials and the parry didn't help, but you know, such as war. I just got to kind of you know, win or learn, um, basically is what what I always say. And here I'm just you know, giving Wheeler a, a hard time because. Um, he just he wasn't appearing and we needed to get things moving but ultimately we didn't we didn't really need him to uh to clear i was just just giving them a hard time called him an old man in the chat and uh and, and yeah but smooth war um we did um we we did have some mishaps in uh in the battle group uh you know our, our alliance leader steve lost his streak i think he was around 150 or 160 so that's kind of sad but we did win the war. Shout out to Karate Mike, Andrew, and PWF for the MVPs. GG's to Paulo. And uh, we have one more war left in the season. And then it's off-season time. We get a break. And I will see you guys in the next one.